Um, and hello, everybody. For those who didn't catch my name, I'm Linda, and I'm from ACMI, or ACME, as we call it, in Melbourne. My pronouns are she and her, and I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you today from the never ceded lands of the Wurundjeri and Wurundjeri peoples um, to pay my respects to their elders past and present and to acknowledge that I am an occupant and a beneficiary of their dispossession. Now today I wanted to talk to you about ACME's renewal project, which has been a major multi-year journey. Um, but first I wanted to give you a little background. So ACME, for those of you who don't know, is ACME is the Museum of Screen Culture. We celebrate the wonder and the power of the world's most democratic art form and we foster the next generation of makers, players and watchers. We have a very full calendar of exhibitions, screenings, commissions, festivals and industry and education programs that explore the stories, the technologies and the artists that create our shared screen culture. Since we opened our doors as ACME in 2002, we have been home to more than 63 exhibitions, hundreds of events, and tens of thousands of film screenings. Our collection was founded as the uh, Victorian State Film Centre collection in 1946. Um, as un and under ACME, it's been refocused, but it continues to grow. Our collection now encompasses screen um, culture equipment and props, video games, and we have an increasingly important archive of historical social memory, um, much of it donated to us in the form of home movie collections. We're also home to an increasingly significant body of time-based media. Um, some of them are collections that have been donated to us. Um, others are commissions by ACME. And there's just a, another snapshot of some of our recent collections and acquisitions. In 2018, we embarked on a very ambitious multi-year $40 million journey that we call our renewal. And our goal here was not just to refurbish or renovate or even rebuild. We really wanted to reimagine just what a museum could be, who it could reach, and how we could provide new experiences. The results has been a pretty complete architectural, programmatic, and technological transformation that I truly believe has made ACME a multi-platform museum. The renewal encompassed extensive building works, which have really transformed our space, opened it right up. We've established new education spaces. We've set up a publicly accessible um, and working media preservation laboratory, where we're working to conserve um, material across a range of formats. And we have an extensive new centrepiece permanent exhibition, The Story of the Moving Image, of which more in a moment. Our new online platform is much more than just a website. It does all the things a website does. But in addition, it extends and expands a visit to ACME, again, more in a moment. It includes our new uh, Gallery 5 online exhibition space which will host online only artworks. Our new Cinema 3 streaming service, which is an online extension of our in-house cinemas that provides a really quality curated um, cinema offering. And as well as exposing our entire collection, it enables us to deepen the engagement with our collection by making new connections and links between um, works in our collection and works in the greater outside world. Plus, we are working very hard at the moment to bring online um, emulation game playing. So hopefully that will be coming soon. I won't go into more detail on the other aspects of our renewal today, as I wanted to concentrate on a couple of key developments in the technological side of the transformation. 
Now, ACME was already closed for our building works at the end of 2019 when the pandemic struck. And I can't help feeling that 18 months later, after so many lockdowns, there might be a, uh, a certain amount of um, tiredness. Uh, people might be somewhat digitally jaded and talk of digital transformation and rich online experiences might sound a bit glib and overhyped at this point, but I do believe it's true that with our renewals technological developments, we really have been able to offer new and deeply engaging rich experiences and ways to extend and deepen a visit to ACME, whether that's in person or online or both. Now, the story of the moving image is at our heart. It's a large, free, very interactive exhibition that explores major moments in moving image history, including origins and future of cinema, production design and the creative process, Australian culture and stories, the rise of video games, and how screens inform, influence and empower us. And I'd like to play you a short video um, that gives you an overview of that exhibition. Thank you for watching that. Hopefully that will give you just a taste of what the new ACME looks like physically and some of the uh, content in our new exhibition, The Story of the Moving Image. In our reimagining of our museum, we wanted to go further than simply offering that new exhibition online as well as in our galleries. We wanted to really deepen the visitors' engagement by allowing an ongoing personal collection to the exhibition to enable an individual's own curated collection of exhibition content that can be revisited online, explored in a visitor's own time and space on their own device, and that can be connected to and expanded to include more of our content. And we also wanted to extend the experience by linking our material to the wider worlds of screen culture. Obviously, there is an entire cosmos out there of content that we don't and can't, could never um, contain in a single exhibition, a whole museum, or even a website. So, developed alongside the exhibition are uh, two um, technological developments of great importance to us. One is the lens that you can see there on the screen and the other is our constellations. I'm going to play you a short video um, showing you the lens in operation in the gallery. <laughs> ACME's lens in operation there. 
Um, it was developed in partnership with Second Story and Swinburne University. And it is a really simple, lightweight cardboard disc, recycled cardboard disc. Um, with a uh, chip and an antenna sticker on the back of it. It communicates with lens readers throughout the exhibition. And as you've seen, people just walk through the exhibition, tap anything that they're interested in, um, and then they can explore that later in their own time and space and revisit it and share it with others and, and build on it. The lens has been a roaring success. Um, so even with the incredibly curtailed visitation that we've had during lockdown, we reopened in February 2021 uh, and had to close again in um, June, I believe it was. But by April, uh, we had already had one million unique taps of that lens. So it's obviously proving a bit of a hit with our visitors. Now the lens also animates our constellations, which you saw at the end of that video, which is a human curated web of connections that lets visitors link their lens collections to a whole world of material. Material that they might never have encountered or considered related to what they're looking at before. And importantly, these constellations are curated by humans at ACME, not by algorithms and they illuminate historical artistic creative links between content in, in quite new and unexpected ways. So once again, I'm just going to switch to a video and show you a little more of the constellations. was a short video made by um, some of our development partners, Grumpy Sailor, who helped us um, produce those constellations. All of that, so what you just saw there was the constellation tables that physically exist within ACME's exhibition space. But the constellations are also integrated into our new online platform. So um, you've seen a visitor collecting their um, material on a lens. When they log in at home, here's an example of um, the post-visit experience. So my friend has walked through the gallery, tapped on the things that they're interested in with their lens and has shared their lens visit with me. And I can scroll through this, see what they've collected, and I might be interested in a particular work, I can click on that, is because this is integrated into our full um, online museum, it takes me to the detailed works page for that work, where there's some further information, it tells me how long it's on display for, it tells me other people have also been interested and collected this one on their lens. Um, it can show other related works in our collection and our exhibition. And it also shows you this constellation. So this work is connected to a range of other works. Each of those connections has been curated by a human and is therefore explained and augmented with some text here. Um, and importantly, as I keep emphasising, um, not all of these connections are at ACME. Um, here is an example of a film that is not in ACME's collection, and yet we've been able to present the data about this work and even make it playable from our own website in a really seamless way. It looks very much like all our other data. Um, we've also been able to link a variety of um, curator's notes, essays, extra visual material, 
Um, here's just another example of that. Um, this is the display in gallery of my brilliant career and we've grouped together a number of things under this display. So as well as the film, there are things like publicity stills um, and we can click through to those and look at those one by one, should we wish. Now, all of these new experiences, our lens, our constellation, our ability to present more content on our online platform and to make it playable, are all down to an in-house um, development of ours called XOS. And that stands for Experience Operating System. We developed this in-house um, over a pretty intensive iterative process that's given us a really um, scalable, extendable and flexible platform for things that we want to do further into the future. The picture here is our development team's mascot called SOX. Um, it was partly developed to keep them sane during the development process. Um, but it also isn't a bad uh, 3D graphic representation of our system with our tentacles of function all connected back to a cephalod brain. XOS does a lot of work. It manages the configuration and the monitoring of around about 1,000 devices, screen devices within our exhibition. It delivers the media content and subtitles to those devices. It allows us to transcode our video from master preservation formats into accessible and, and web suitable formats for play on site. Uh, it imports and normalises data from Vernon and other sources, normalises that and serves it up to the website in a really seamless way. It allows the building and the integrated display of our constellations. It manages our lens readers and the lens interactions by the visitors and it manages permissions for our online content so that some of our video, for example, is only playable when you're on your own device but when you're on site at the Acme building. Other video is available for global play anywhere in the world and XOS handles all those permissions. It does more. It's, it also provides us a wealth of analytic data, as you can imagine, the um, anonymised but um, true visitor experience data coming back from one million taps of our lens has given us some really good data um, indicating what people find the most thrilling and exciting in the exhibition. Uh, we're also very shortly releasing a public um, XOS API that will let um, those interested play with our data and do a lot of cool stuff with it. So if you're interested in that, keep your eyes open for an announcement uh, in the next couple of weeks. Now behind XOS, Vernon, oh, that's the, um, that's the XO, some of the XOS administrative interface. Uh, you can see we separately manage um, images and video content in here. Uh, our works, our constellations, and then the um, exhibition maintenance uh, where we manage the devices and the taps from the lenses and etc. Behind XOS is still Vernon. It's still our foundation. Uh, it's still the source of truth for our organisation, although as we've seen, not the whole source of truth. Um, our collection management and exhibition related business processes still rely on Vernon and Vernon remains the major source of data for our online museum. And in fact, the flexibility of Vernon and its in-house customization tools really helped us in the XOS development. Um, we were able to uh, create new user, uh, new record types of display group and subgroup to give that grouping I showed you with my brilliant career. We were able to write uh, new user symbolics to bring exhibition venue data into the object file for display of the work um, and etc. And importantly, uh, the Vernon API um, allows XOS to import the Vernon data directly from the API which it does um, every two hours. 
So it's been a long and fascinating journey with a cast of thousands. Here's um, some of the people involved at ACME. Uh, here are some of our external um, development partners. Um, and for those interested, here's some further reading. ACME.net.au is our major museum, online museum platform where you can really get lost in a world of screen culture. Labs um, is where we've posted a lot of articles by the development team uh, and our user um, interface designers, etc. Um, that gives some really good background on the experience of this whole journey. Um, and GitHub is where um, the code repositories for much of our development are. So we're hoping that we can share this with the wider museum world and enable lots of cool stuff. So that's a taste of ACME's renewal. Here's the lens physically. Um, for those who don't believe it's just a recycled cardboard disc, there it is. It's extremely lightweight. So um, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Um, and I hope that's given you a taste of ACME. And I encourage you to visit us online and, when possible, hopefully in person here in Melbourne. Thank you very much. Uh, just a couple of quick notes about the technical side of things. Vernon CMS has a couple of different programming interfaces that allow developers to get direct access to the raw data. So firstly, Vernon Browser, our web module, has a, a simple to use API, which many different sites are using to build their own apps or their own bespoke websites. And then there's a more detailed programming interface that directly connects into Vernon CMS on the Windows server. So that API provides access to all of the data. So all of the different files, all of the different fields. And that's what, a, what the API is that ACMI are using for this project. So they're connecting directly into that back of house uh, system and accessing all of the different data they need. So extensive fields on the object file, as well as a lot of detail from the person file for things like director details, organizations that were involved in productions of uh, individual uh, works within the collection, and then also related exhibitions. Uh, so there's a uh, question uh, from Maddie, uh, Maddie Jones at Tairawhiri, about whether you employed additional curators to make those um, human-made links between individual items within the, the data set, the constellations. No, we, we actually did that from our existing resources, but we did um, widen the net across the organisation. So it wasn't just curators involved. We had uh, education uh, staff, um, people from the collections team, anybody who was interested, basically. So even a lot of our um, uh, gallery attendant staff who are most directly involved at the coalface with the visitors um, they made a lot of great um, suggestions so they are all internally built by acme staff at this stage i do love the idea of opening them up uh, to visitors and other users that's 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 a, a quite an inspiring idea um, we may have some difficulties in resourcing the moderation that we need to do on that, but that is a really interesting idea, Maddie. So um, thank you. We'll take that on board. Uh, the next question we have is from Megan Harvey at Auckland Museum. She asks about um, how are you making those connections to things that are outside of your collection? Um, how are you making some of those choices? What kinds of things are you linking to? So um, the initial choice is a curatorial one. People genuinely think there is a, an artistic, creative ideas or historical link between two works. How we capture external works for presentation in those constellations of connection is via XOS. So as well as importing data from Vernon, XOS imports data from other services with um, usable APIs. So, for example, we import data from TMGDB, the, um, the Internet Movie Database uh, and the Internet Games Database. 
XOS then normalizes that data uh, and puts it out to the website alongside our own data. So we have embedded um, embedded links to other institutions' websites, other organisations' watch lists, um, etc. Um, but it's all presented as though it, it so that it looks the same as ACME's own data. But it's really just, um, yeah, getting it via. So Just Watch has an API, um, IMDB, sorry, TMDB has an API, IMDB has an, has an API, and we're making good use of all of those. It, the, the technical detail of that is a bit beyond me, but um, I have every confidence that our development team have demonstrated they can do it really well. So there's more, I think there'll be more developments along those lines too to make it extended even further. And is the, is the museum back open now? We actually opened on Saturday. Um, and it is obviously uh, still slightly limited, but we actually, we have people back on site, which is great news. We had a, a pretty intense week while people ran back on site and powered up those 1,000 devices. <laughs> but everything worked again and the exhibition is back in full swing and hopefully will be packed with children and families today. Uh, Alex Chibata asks whether there's a different role for Vernon Browser now that you've got Constellation in, um, in place, but in your case, you're not using Vernon Browser for the public oh, side, yes. so there isn't really an impact there. You've yes, got your own true. bespoke website that again's been built by the in-house team. We did use the Vernon Browser as our collection access point for many years, um, and it served us very well. It's um, the advanced search functions particularly are great in the Vernon browser, but to present our collections seamlessly alongside all this other material and, and linkages and content, uh, we needed to, to go further. And plus the integration, XOS's role as um, the integrator and deliverer of all the media content, it, it just keeps everything seamless. There's one place where we manage the, the data, the images, the media and the links all together there in XOS. So although it's middleware and not many users within ACME interact with it, it really is the beating heart um, of all this stuff that we can layer on top. Um, for, for those that aren't familiar with Vernon Browser, it's the web module for our application, but it just deals with data that's stored in Vernon. Um, so the ACMI co case is obviously a lot more complex because there's data being pulled in from a whole variety of different platforms that are stored in a system that's completely separate from Vernon CMS. So I think that's all the questions we've got. Um, thank you very much, Linda. That's just great to see all the work you've done. I mean, it's, it's really groundbreaking, some of the technological advancements in the museum, and, and it's just such an a amazing-looking tool to have something so easy to use where people have a way then to revisit the things that they liked when they were at the physical museum, go back and access all of that rich digital content that you've got online. There's no way to present all of that within the physical museum but now you're giving them opportunities to take what they liked at the museum and go and then jump to other new places once they get home exactly so um we're we're, we're pretty pretty proud and pleased with it and um it's been great to have the opportunity to share it with some others today so thank you everyone for listening and thanks paul and lisa for the opportunity to present it